right now, Garrett and I are still doing, like, he's doing the job of a logistics manager and a supply chain manager, um, your HR, <laughs> and what else are you? <laughs> logistics, supply chain, HR, finance. Um, um, sometimes I feel like I'm still a warehouse manager, um, operations manager. Right. It's, it's, it's at least six to seven different things that... That you're doing. That I'm doing. Right. Plus... Husband, dad, and deacon, and then at, at ten o'clock, fraternity member, and then at, at eleven o'clock at night, hey babe, did calling you, the hogs. Did, did, did you do this? Hey babe, did you do this? Hey, did and so, daddy, you know, daddy, yeah. Hey everybody out there in podcast land. This is Garrett and Sita coming to you with Idea to Invention, a podcast <laughs> for inventors and small businesses. I was good until I looked at Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Got her to snort. <laughs> Pretty damn good. I love you, babe. I love you, babe. (laughs) Oh, okay. You just introduced yourself, and that was it. Well, I was waiting for you to stop (laughs) with your comedy show. It wasn't me. It was you. Oh, Lord. Okay. Hey, I'm Sita. This is Garrett. Hey. How you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Allergies a little, you know, because Georgia in almost fall. I can't believe how the leaves are falling already. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's still it's muggy and hot. And the leaves are falling. What does that mean? The world is coming to an <laughs> end. The leaves are like, I'm out. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. Not <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we need to stop with the goofies. So we are here um, on Eye to Eye, and today we are going to talk about our, is it called equity mm-hmm. crowd? What is it? What's the official name of it? Um, crowdfunding. But it's different in the sense of, Traditional crowdfunding, it's another name, that's why I was... Well, no, it's just, it's crowdfunding through the Republic platform. But it's not like Kickstarter, that's what I'm saying. It's not... No, it... Because you're actually making an investment, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because it it has um, a potential equity piece tied to it. It's just not someone donating money, right, just to a a good cause and potentially getting something free. They're actually... um, investing with the uh, the desire to potentially get equity within the company um at at a point in time where there's a an event that happens whether it's a uh, mergers and acquisition we get bought or um there's another uh, round of uh funding uh raising capital that happens right so a, a certain event has to happen before that equity piece becomes um in play Okay, right. So, Republic started courting us. Um, it was a year ago, wasn't it? What was it? Excuse me, that coffee just got me for a second. I guess it was like in November, December of last year. And what happened was, I am a follower of Arlen Hamilton. Do y'all know who Arlen is? No, who is he? Snap. Okay, we're going to have to cut that part out. Because <laughs> you can't do that. You asked the question. Because Arlen is not a boy. Oh. <laughs> you just said a name. Like, it's, like somebody's supposed I to know. I know, but I thought you knew who she was. You can't say no. Oh, you want me to just say? Yes. Oh, well, who is she? No, you say yes. I know my girl Ar- Arlen. Yes. yes. Okay, so we're going to, you gonna, you going to take care of that, Isaac? <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Here we go. Three, <laughs> two, one. So, I follow my girl Arlen Hamilton. You know who Arlen is, right? Yeah. Okay. So, for those who do not know who Arlen is, 
Arlen, let me get to uh, look her up because she's awesome. She is, let's see, Arlen is an investor and the founder of the managing partner of Backstage Capital. In May 2020, Hamilton released her first book from Penguin Random House entitled It's About Damn Time, which is based on her personal journey into entrepreneurship and venture capital. So I've been following Arlen for a couple of years now and I'm um, I am, and Backstage Capital. But they mostly, I'm not going to say only, but they do fund a lot of black and LBGTQ um, venture capital, or not tech, tech startups. So um, she also has this newsletter that goes out monthly called Mixtape. So I've been, you know, watching Mixtape. And a lot of people we kind of have in, co in common, like um, Yalista of um, Natural Root Stall, mm -hmm. or is it? Healthy root stall or natural root stall? Oops, hold on. Healthy root stall. See, I knew I had it wrong. So it was healthy root stall. So um, na uh, Ulista is a um, what uh, is a mentee of Arlen, and um, I just was so inspired by Arlen's story because she literally was homeless and everything else mm -hmm. before she started, you know, her venture capitalist um, investment firm. So. She, um, how, I mean, how did she go from homelessness to it's a long story? You want me to go? <laughs> no, 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 I mean, you brought it up. I was just, just curious. I, let's but, see. I mean, if you don't, you don't have to go into it, we can, we can talk about we'll it. We'll talk about it another time mm -hmm. when we interview Arlen because it, it, when that happens, we'll get her to tell her, get yeah. her to tell us the whole story. So, anyway, um, like I said, I subscribed to Mixtape, and Mixtape had in there that they had a, there was a couple other you know, businesses that they keep an eye on, and they had launched on Republic. And I know, I think, I'm not sure exactly how the relationship is, but Arlen has a relationship with the Drapers. And I don't know if you've heard of the Drapers. Mm -hmm, yeah. Okay. So uh, Republic, I think, is somehow, is I think it's one of their brainchilds, Republic is. So Republic... Co. in May, I'm going to read exactly so we know, so no one is confused by the cryptic version of what our explanation of Republic is. So in May of 2016, the United States Securities and Exchange Commission enacted Title III of the Job Acts, allowing a majority of the U.S. population to be able to invest in startups from, for the very first time. But the complicated legal requirements called for a funder, founder and investor-friendly platform to make startup investing truly, ex truly accessible. That's why we built Republic. Our founding portal and broker dealers are SEC registered and members of the FINRA. And, and if you're at all interested in startups, you've heard of our past work. Republic is part of a family of startup platforms together with AngelList and Product Hunt is one of the most trusted online startup ecosystems in the world. We launched our own equity investment platform in 2016 and didn't stop there. So that's what Republic is, is an equity investment platform. So we launched our campaign on Republic like two, maybe three weeks ago. So we have a, and the reason why, like Garrett, can you explain why we decided to launch with Republic? Because we need some money. No. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, just, no, that was just to add some <laughs> levity to the situation. Um, yeah, number one, because we needed some money. And we, um, out of the few years, the past years that we've been in business, and the most recent years, the last four years or so. Say, so, hey, we ain't been in business in a few years. Um, we well, need okay, some time on that belt. But uh, I was, my mind, I was thinking about the last four years of us trying to get equity, and I mean trying to get funding um, from uh, traditional sources, and that was not happening. Mm, wonder why? At all. And um, hmm, wonder why? Why do you think? Well, let's say this: we were able to achieve minimal funding, but we didn't. First of all, our father couldn't lend us a million dollars. Second of all. Um, I don't yeah, know if you know who we the, are. I mean, I would. I, I mean, I don't even say it. because of how we've been educated about what funding is 
possible mm-hmm. um, and, and, and how other startups that are probably within like the tech industry and so forth, um, the funding that comes to them um, even before anything, it just is like, like night and day would it, as far as what we were able to get through ACE in, in the smaller level of funding. Yeah, but now, why? we're not taking it for granted, and we appreciate it. But I'm just saying, as far as it's in, it's not smaller. It's I mean, it's a micro mm-hmm. piece in comparison. Um, to, it to is other a crumb industries. off of a crumb. Yeah, based on that big wedge of cake <laughs> everybody else gets, and you know, a traditional funding, no matter I don't care what anybody says, is based on collateral, and getting re- receiving traditional funding and i'm talking about from banks and this that and the other yeah it's based on collateral mm-hmm. and going back in history and everything else in the the the, the um, country that we live in brown people black people were uh, always locked out of buying being able to have and keep being able to acquire and keep um property, land, whatever, anything that would have, that would, they, we were locked out of the har- housing market. I'm gonna get, I can, that's a whole other story, but the Housing Act of 19... kind of locked us out of the housing market, which in turn helped, re, re, in turn locked African-American people out of, um, there's a specific word for it, but I can't, re, being able to gain wealth mm-hmm. from real estate. Yep. So... So Nine times out of ten, yeah. we do not have the type of collateral that could be used um, to achieve a loan of a significant amount of money. Yeah, plus, or we do. But plus, I, th- I, th- I think that um, tra- yeah, traditional lending is all has always been based on the collateral that you have, mm-hmm. and that collateral for the for the lending institution in theory r- reduces their risk mm-hmm. right and that, that's the name of the game right so someone is going to give you money they want to re- they want to make sure that they can have something to collect if you default right so they want to reduce the risk of them giving you money right but if it's um, certain but I, I i'm just a firm believer mm-hmm. that there's a different risk tolerance mm-hmm. that too based on who color. comes in the door. Right. Um, and so we have not, uh, black folk, uh, brown folk, um, traditionally haven't been treated favorably in, in that, right? And so to your point about having land, having other pieces of wealth, having anything else to utilize as collateral mm-hmm. to make that lending process a lot easier in theory, um, we just haven't had. We've been locked out. We've been locked out. Period. I and mean, you may own your home, but how many of us are going to put up our home? But I, but I would, st- I would still, I would still say though that. Actually, we don't own our home. We that we the bank owns our home. We just borrowing it. <laughs> um, that uh, even with um, you made me lose my train of I'm thought. I'm sorry. Um, and it had to do with cl- oh about uh, the banking in. They're still, with the way industry is going, right? So even like with COVID, it has made it made it so clear that brick and mortar maybe a thing of the past is 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 numbered, right? Um, they got to adapt, or they're going to disappear. And you, everybody's seeing them disappear. I mean, if you ride if you ride down any main corridor mm-hmm. where there was, you know, the Target, the Publix, the Kroger. The Tuesday morning, the, you know, the belt, blah, 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 blah. Pier 1 is gone. <laughs> yeah. Tuesday mornings are gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's going to be some, there's going to be a lot of casualties of brick and mortar stores that do not have or had not started to begin to build or focus on their online presence. Well, yeah, and, and that's, that's where I was going in regards to, to the banks that they have to begin to change their methodology of how they lend Mm -hmm. and their thought process, right? Because if you have more e-commerce happening um, and less brick and mortar, 
that will lend to less physical collateral that one would normally have if they just have an online presence, right? Um, and really the only collateral for the most part will be the inventory that they have. Um, unless they own the building. Unless, unless right. they own the building, unless they Which own that typically the machinery, the unless they own right. Right, those things that are, you know, to make their product. But if, if they're a, a store that sells various other products, really they're going to end up only having a warehouse full of inventory. And usually, right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so the bank has to become more creative about how they deal with that risk. They should, but. They should, but I don't think that's happening. Yeah, that's not, that's not. Because they should, but at the same time, we still have the underlying issues that have been piling up years over years that purposely were put in place to keep brown people and, and black people um, out of being able to build financial wealth from real estate. But I got a question, though. With that argument is... Um, as as businesses and entities begin to go to a more online type of presence and e-commerce presence, how do they know you're black? If 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 you're applying for a loan and you're applying online and you're applying through a website and you're doing this, how, where where does the color of your skin come into play? What's my name? I didn't tell Dorothy to name you. Well, Cita. I'm just to being honest. We just we've been. My name is Garrett. Flat out. <laughs> How many lashes are there? That are brown. No. That are what? Not brown. There's a lot of not brown lashes. Lash is not a brown name. You sure? I'm almost certain. Because I don't know any, very uh, many lashes at all. So then that brown or but but even then. But you weren't the one that was on, you're not the you're not the one that was on the the um, what do you call it whose name was first on the loan application. Okay. You sound and you say that with but a that, question but that, mark. But that but doesn't answer, answer my question though. All you gotta do is lift up my social security number. The first the middle two numbers tell you where I'm from. But okay, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. I hear you. Get your, your name and everything. My question though is. What if your name, and you are a brown person, mm -hmm. and your name is John Smith? Okay. It's uh, still about, eventually, they're going to ask for collateral. Eventually, they're going to ask for you to put up something that is going to be of equal value of what you're trying to borrow. Yes, I would agree. And that's where we have bankers look at us and say, well, don't you have some relatives that each can give you $10,000 a piece? And with a straight face, and he ha wholeheartedly, and maybe he doesn't, maybe we'd be in punked, but <laughs> that happens every single time. And the thing is, the more that we talk to other people, other people that look like us in the small business, <clears throat> excuse me, in the small, small business sector or on small business entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they all said the same thing. You sit up there in front of a, a banker that does not look like you, really cannot relate to you, and will say some like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so obvious. Now, didn't you, weren't you privy to the home, the home buying act of such a, you know I don't have that collateral. You know no one that looks like me that I'm related to has that type of collateral, unless they were under, able to be under the radar and bought something years ago, and usually they were not able to do that by themselves. Mm -hmm. They needed to have a front person, or they bought land, hence, like, were Mercedes Benz. When, they, <clears throat> when Bankhead and all of that was all brown owned, and you know, they were buying up that, they had no idea that one day <laughs> Mercedes Benz was going to come and plop up on top of that land. Mm -hmm. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. But we kind of like got way off course from Republic. Well, no, because <laughs> are we sorry no, going back? Because because <clears throat> you had asked why why Republic and yes, and the yeah. conversation went to well, we started out trying to go traditional, mm -hmm. and we talked and about we why mm -hmm. traditional wasn't working, mm -hmm. and so 
we had an opportunity that came through um, your your cyber cyber stalking and, again yeah and, Arlen Hamilton yep and that Republic came came to light right and Republic came to light a, as a an opportunity to potentially do a different type of crowdfunding mm-hmm. um, that had an equity tie to it right and with, for a substantially more amount of well, yeah, a be, substantial be, amount of money that we couldn't right because of, because of the vehicle that's tied to um, Republic is is called a uh, it's a safe and uh, it is um, it, it's it's the the type of investment vehicle that will on the back end allow for some form of equity um, to be to be potentially uh, dispersed um, once an event happens meaning mm-hmm. you get the company gets purchased or company sales or the company goes to another round of, uh, of funding. And it lets regular, everyday people who want to invest from $100 all the way up to venture capitalists that can invest, what, up to $250,000 or something like that. There's a cap number, but I can't remember what it is. But anyway, it's, it, it, it's, it's a form of crowdsourcing to where you get more than just a perk. You're actually buying into the company in some type of way. Um, So we launched our Republic, and now we had to qualify. It wasn't like you just open up an account like you do on Indiegogo or or Kickstarter and just put your information in and put some pictures up, and then, bam, you're live. You had to go through a vetting process, and, you know, they really work with you on um, building your campaign page. So if you search Republic or Puff Cuff on Republic, you will see our campaign page. So basically, um, we la- like I said, we launched three weeks ago, and they want you to get past a certain um, initial investment before they really just, like, blast you out to all of their right. list of investors, their angel investors, and this, that, and the other. So we had to get past $25,000 um, uh, initially, they didn't really give us a time frame, but they did say, you know, once you get past this, then you open up to this, that, and the other. So when does that start? When is uh, what's? It's it's starting now. It's just that there is some. We have. Uh, she sent an email today that we have some a questionnaire to fill out, mm-hmm. and um, she wants to get more content and pictures and everything, and then they will start to. Okay. It will start to come out more on their platform. Now, we've right. already done a little bit of marketing of our campaign, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, via email and a little bit of social. So we, we, made, we, made the, we achieved the $25,000 mark a right. um, little less than a week ago. Or, or was it earlier this week? Uh, no, the 25000 was last week. Last week. So we now we've almost su- doubled it because we're, we're um, almost at 45000 right now. So... Um, and we've got 126 more days left to invest, and we so far we have 177 investors. So it's been really, really, um, uh, I've been good for the soul to see all yeah, the different. It's, yeah, it's, it's been interesting to see all the different people that are um, that are that are choosing to invest, and and you can you know those who are you know have some in depth questions about the company and and our plans and future thoughts and what it means to have. Um, to invest um, in this way, um, so yeah, it, it's been. It's have you been said? Have you read the reviews? I have not read all the reviews. I've read some of them, and I was. They're like make you want to cry. I was like, wow, yeah. And actually, and actually, I saw some uh, some folks on uh, that have invested. I just, I just didn't think that they would be like, interested. Oh, well. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? Oh, okay, all right. All right. So yeah, thankful for that. As, no, definitely. I mean, the, it's been it's been it's been awesome. And and if you guys are wondering what the word, um, so that we we keep using the acronym or the word safe, um, and what it stands for, it stands for simple agreement for future equity. Um, and so it's 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 a it's what it says is a simple agreement for future equity, and and it's an agreement between a company and an investor, um, in a simplified form to uh, um, potentially provide equity to that investor in the midst of an event. Um, and the great thing, the one thing about this particular type of investment is that it, 
It has a, a cap of about a million uh, that you can raise u- utilizing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, which is why you would have to go to, in, to, to other different type of instruments. In order after to, that, if after you, that. Right. But our goal is 500000 If you all get us to a million, we'd gladly take it. <laughs> <laughs> but our goal is the 500000 And we should also tell you what we're going, what is going to be done and why we need this 500000 So what we've gotten before, we've never been able to acquire more than like $90,000 in form of a loan or a line of credit or anything like that. Mm-hmm. And the more you get into business, um, 90000 if you're only able to like get $90,000 in like little chunks here and there, and that's what, probably every four or five months, you can only do so much. What is going on over there? <laughs> you can only do, do so much. Yeah. And, I mean, for instance... Our payroll every month is right around, what'd you say, 20 grand? Mm-hmm. So just covering payroll, a 90,000, if you don't not do nothing else, yes. don't buy inventory, don't five, pay your rent, don't pay insurance, what else? Don't pay what else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't pay what else. <laughs> don't pay what else, <laughs> but just pay your employee, employees, which currently we have 10 or we have 11. Including contractors, you mean? I mean, everybody? Everybody gets paid from, gets a piece of puff cuff every two weeks. Yeah, it's 11, 11 or 12. 11 or 12 employees. All we could do with that $90,000 is literally pay them, pay them for four, four months. Four months. Four and a half months. That's mm-hmm. it. No, and I used to wonder, I was like, how did people run a business and... Like, I, you would go, like, past restaurants or, like, mom-and-pop delis and nobody's in there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how is this business staying open when ain't nobody buying, like, a 4 or $5 sandwich? I'm the only one in here. How are, they, how are they open? How are they open all week? How are they open, you know, next month? And I, it just, like, literally b- boggle my mind because I'm like, I know they got to pay light and everything. And that $4.50 for that sub sandwich ain't going to cover <laughs> all of that but then it was like it's crazy now but it's like wow that's what working capital is called and i'm sorry this whole econ- this global economy works on credit and ca- and capital is credit i mean in, in all you know in all sense of the word because that's why we ruined our credit in the beginning because we were trying to get trying to make up for the fact that we didn't have the collateral but we had decent credit scores and we uh, borrowed against that, but eventually that catches up with you because what happens is the, the needs of the business, if your business is growing, all of the needs of the business, business are going to cost more. And I mean, the expenses just, they cost more. In order to make more, you gotta spend more. And what was happening is um, either the interest rate was eating us alive or the fact that the business was growing and the business expenses were growing faster than what the money was coming in. So although we're very thankful, like the Shopify capital, the PayPal capital, they still will not let, that's still enough, I just shouldn't say they, those amounts that are being, you know, that are accessible are still not going to let you grow at the speed that you have potentially to grow. Yeah, yeah, no, and typically that type of funding allows you to sustain just where you're at. Right, that's just like um, a Band-Aid. It's not, it's, it, it, that funding isn't there to help you um, get to the next f- level, to flourish mm-hmm. um, to the next level, unless, un- unless you, you know, you, unless, unless you choose to make because because you'll have if, if that level of funding is the only funding that's coming in, you then have to make a decision on what what you're going to spend mm-hmm. that funding on. You can't take care of everything. You got to do right. priorities. Like so, some point. some stuff is going to have to get chopped, cut, or wait, or, or wait. Um, right. So if you decide to spend that money on on marketing to help generate the revenue then that means that your payroll and 
in your 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 fixed overhead things, you have to figure out a way to cut down on that fixed overhead stuff. Right. In order to to spend that if if that funding is there, unless you know, that's what we're trying to do is get to a point where we're getting um, a level of funding that will take you above and allow you to sustain where you're at as well as give you a little bit give you extra to do all the stuff that you need to do to, to grow right, right? so you can you can live in both worlds right because um, what you find is right now Garrett and I are still doing like he's doing the job of a logistics manager and a supply chain manager um, your HR <laughs> and yeah. what else are you <laughs> logistics supply chain HR finance um, um, Sometimes I feel like I'm still a warehouse manager, um, operations manager. Right. It's, it's, it's at least six to seven different things that... That you're doing. That I'm doing. Right. Plus husband, dad. And, Deacon. And then at, at 10 o'clock... Fraternity member. And then at, at 11 o'clock at night. Hey, babe, did calling you... Calling the hogs. Did, did you do this? Hey, babe, did you do this? Hey, did... And so... Daddy. You know... Daddy. Yeah. Daddy. Can I sleep in your room? But, but the thing no. is, right? And, and, but, you know, but, but, and, and that, that's, that's really the life of, uh, of an entrepreneur. And I, I heard, I was watching this segment today on this morning on the news, and it was like a commercial. And, um, oh, gosh, I forgot the name of this sandwich shop. And he was talking about that they had a sixth shop that, that, was, that they were opening. And he, he said... At the end, he said, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you need to understand it's not for the faint of heart because challenges will come. Mm-hmm. And, and, and your, your load, yeah, you, you, will, you will have to do 10,000 different hats, to, right, in order to make things work, to make things But see, do. that's the thing that we're starting to realize is you cannot get where you want to go by doing, wearing six different hats. No, you, you you can't. But 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 I'm just I'm mm-hmm. just saying that wanting to make sure that 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 that's a that folks understand that I mean even that's the way it's gonna be for a that's while. That's the way it's gonna be mm-hmm. for a while until you are blessed or fortunate enough to get enough funding mm-hmm. that allows you to, to bring people, somebody right, bring in to in take on those those roles hats and do them because that's what their skill set is. Yeah. So, and but in order to do that, you need the funding. Right, and, and that's, you can't that's, act Pete. That's the challenge, and and you can't bring it in the you. And we it, it's 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 easy to say that right to 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 make money you have to spend money. I can see that on a marketing side of things because we've we've seen it that yeah you got to spend a certain amount in order to get things to get exposure to get things going to get a reach in order to get that marketing out when you're selling a a, a product. Um, but putting that thought process when it comes into bringing, bringing in resources, unless that resource is a, is a salesperson that is being paid on um, um, commission based on their sales, that's different because they're bringing in revenue in order to, deal, to, to justify their position. But if you, you just, you have to, this is like a growing pain that as you begin to grow and as you begin to flex, um, you just have to be very strategic and, 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 and factual and number driven as our man Tommy has always told us um, about where you're spending money and, and, and understanding what the return on investment is for where you spend that money and how quickly that return of investment will come back in. Mm-hmm. Because if you are a cash flow, which every company is a cash flow oriented company, unless you have your daddy who gave you a million dollars or whatever, and you have a stockpile of funds that are sitting there, um, your cash flow is, it, it dictates your operational capital um, and how you operate daily. And so uh, you just, you have to be very strategic about how you spend that money. Um, and, and to what, and C- to what Cena said, you, you, you have to, ha- you have to have in your heart and your mind that there are some things that will, you will have to wait. No matter how much in your gut you feel that, like, oh, we got to run, we got to go, we got to go. Okay. You can run and go 
and in two weeks run and go and be underneath water so deep that you can't get out. I think that's where you end up having the team to help you through those moments because, you know, I'm a run and go because my thing is I don't I, – I want to seize the opportunity. But then at the same time, I realize, okay, some things I have to sit down, slow down, sit back, look at the numbers, like you said, and <clears throat> really – Let's think through, let's talk through what, is this opportunity worth missing or is this, you know, something that we have to seize right now? I'm, I'm, a, fan, I'm a fan of seizing the opportunity, but I'm a fan of seizing the opportunity calculated. Right, You, you have right. to calculate, you know, how you can make sure you're ready to seize the opportunity. Um, but as a, as a business, you can't just keep seizing opportunities and you ain't sat down and tried to pre-plan right to anticipate the opportunity that's coming. And so as, as, as we dive into wanting to have Republic, um, this offering, this campaign on Republic to, to blossom and, 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 and bring in uh, the capital that's needed, um, we are foreseeing that, right, we, we've said a number of 500,000. Lord willing, it would definitely be well more than 500,000 that, mm -hmm. that comes in. It's so funny, Lathan, Lathan last night, because I had him listening to the video. Yeah. And he's like, y'all are trying to get 500,000? 500, <laughs> I say, yes. Half a meal? I, I say, yeah. Y'all really think you're going to get that? And I'm like, yes. And he literally is like, Really? Dude, don't underestimate. But don't. No, you, you, and you, I, I know this is a seventeen-year-old, but right. it's one thing. I'm like, no, I'm not. That, 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 right, <laughs> he's buying you yeah, seventy-dollar t-shirts. But anyway, Christ is king. But anyway, so <laughs> Christ is king. <laughs> Christ is king. But he made <laughs> he made Kanye a little chunk of cash, and his, his drawing ain't that great. But anyway, so back to what you were saying about ra raising that five hundred million. Oh, 500,000? 500 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Lord will. No. See, then that's. Y'all, y'all, and that's another part where, where my lovely wife and I may differ um, in regards to our end, end goal, um, our end game, our exit game, if need be. In her mind, she's in the 20 to 30 mil. I'm in the 100 to 200 mil mindset. Um, because I think, I really do believe that because of the market and because of what we have, our product our team and, and our message that it's easily attainable. It's just trying to get the capital to get us, to get us there. Um, so that's why we need your right help. <laughs> Dial 888. <laughs> okay. Listen to her. Just four easy payments. <laughs> right. Uh, 49 dollars <laughs> um, Plus shipping. <laughs> <laughs> shipping and handling. Come separate. So, um, and, and what we want to utilize that, those funds for, um, like she was, she was starting to say in the beginning is that, um, as we begin to, to branch and, and spread our wings with, with Puff Cuff and in the different aspects of the business, um, we need more space. Um, and so the funds would go towards more space. The funds would go towards more resources. Well, like, let's give, a, let's give an example. Like what? We have right now. Oh, you mean as far as? Right. How many employees do we have? So we have, we have about 12 folks. Well, 11. And Let, one bathroom. 11. That should be against the law. Uh, well, you hush. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's true. It should be against the law. So yeah, right, right now, <laughs> we're shoving more people <laughs> into a one-bedroom apartment. What? That's what it feels like. <laughs> and hoping nobody gets COVID. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, hey, listen. Public service announcement. We are taking every measure to ensure that our employees are are sent our PPE, we're in masks, we got gloves, we got sanitizing spray all over the place. We got right. hand sanitizer Other than tagging all them. We have <laughs> listen. To see when tracking they, them they at probably night. they probably more clean when they leave our establishment <laughs> than when they come up in there. But either way. <laughs> um so um so yeah, we need more space and and and, and no, but seriously, besides the one bathroom, yeah, besides the one bathroom, we've got we've got four people in one room. You and I have separate offices in the creative right. We have, so yeah. have four people in the creative room. Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to put four people in the warehouse no mm -mm. room. 
Mm. Oh yeah, I forgot. No. No, it, it, one is going to move out of the yeah. the, 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 <laughs> so, the warehouse office will still only have three folks in that office. in that in that space. Then we will have a total of which we're probably going to have to get some lockers for out there or something. Um, we three. Got, well, well, we'll have a total of outside of those three that are inside the office. There will be another. We'll have a, probably another three. Three just that are in the warehouse. In itself. the warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. We're getting ready to hire an admin. Um, so she better come correct, but <laughs> <laughs> that's my opinion because uh, they talking crazy. Like, are you kidding? What? No, Psh. you need to do the redo the research. Do I don't the care research. what the research says. I know what we can. Well, either way. Okay. Yeah. Do the, the, what, listen. And, that, and that's look, the thing. That's folks, one of the things. Folks, the folks, listen, listen. As you're building your business, just because. One research says one thing, one research says another thing when it comes to pay and hourly and so forth. Yes, you want to provide a livable wage. But that's all he want to provide. You have to you know because a livable wage is 15 to 20 bucks an hour mm. to some in most parts. Um, mm. But you have to understand your cash flow. And if, you also if, if your cash flow does not support or only supports three people at a livable wage, then that's what you have. And you get what you pay for. No, not that you get what you pay yes, for. Yes, you do. No. And we've done that before. No, it's not. No, 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 no. No. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. We well, just have to agree to disagree on that one. You know, I know I will. want to pay people too much money. We will. I know. I know and, that. And, and but you know what? It's, it's but I want to attract and keep the right, the certain level of employee. Well, yeah, but but based on on, on what they do and and where we're at, we can only get so much. I know that. Right. Our our bucket is only so full, and so we can't. That's why we need the money. We can't think that we. That's why we're on Republic. Yeah, but just for, yeah, but either way, the money's will go to additional resources um the resources is well we need bigger warehouse space we need bigger office space yeah, you keep cutting me off as i'm doing my list because you go you're to going else. to generals i want you to be pacific that's an ocean <laughs> <laughs> right so be pacific so what's not specific we need some about, more space. That might be, you know what? I want to well, knock out If you let me finish, okay, then I'll, I would tell you I'll how much space finish. we're looking to go. Go ahead and finish. Man, y'all y'all, feel me? Y'all see what, what's happening? Yeah. So You should be used to it. <laughs> yeah, 25, 25 years. 25 years in. Nope. Nope. I know brothers that's, that's been in the game for almost 50. They still ain't used to just it. Just let her go. Let her <laughs> go. Just, just let it be. <laughs> let, let it be, son. Let, let it go. <laughs> Pick your battles. Right. I mean, don't pick none. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly what we'll be talking about. Pick your battle. Is it worth it? No, it's not. So, <laughs> so y'all didn't know y'all going to get a marriage lesson today. But either way, so yes, we need more space. And the space we're looking at is will literally be um, 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 20,000 square foot plus um, so that we can expand our fulfillment side of things uh as well as um uh, our marketing we need funds specifically for marketing um because we know that you know you have to put in enough dollars in order for that marketing engine to start kicking out um, some results and a good return on investment whether it's your digital marketing um or traditional marketing and then um we have to hire two other employees oh, two other. well well yeah there's two other employees that we're trying two c level employees that we need we need well, she keeps saying to sea level. We need, we need, we need a person. No. And some, like, hold on, let me finish. Don't say no. You can't anticipate she what I'm about to say. She keeps on saying sea level, like she, he's getting ready to change what I'm saying. Because they're not sea level. Yes, they are. An office, uh, a, a cash. sea level employee. Let me read you the definition. What the Google okay, says. Okay. First of all, so, so she's gonna sit here and tell a person who was in corporate America for twenty. I didn't say C plus, suite. Hold on, let me finish my statement. 20 plus something years, and she ain't been in corporate America, but, whoa. Give me a definition of what a C, 
level I didn't employees. See, say, see, I didn't say C-level executive. I said C-level employee. So what is it, Mr. Corporate? Read your definition. No, go ahead and take your... No, come on. Run, read your no. definition. Come on. Come on. Mm -mm. Give it to me. No, I'm going on to the next one. <laughs> so... No, because no, because we need a um, um, uh, cash flow manager, and we need a supply chain manager. Those are the two that we really need because we're trying to um, uh, number one in our supply chain, own more of our supply chain, uh, and control more of our supply chain, and then number two, uh, uh, the cash flow manager will help us maintain and be very very aware of what our cash very flow is purposeful and their intention and their that's what they do they monitor our cash flow um and so those are the two things that we know we need um, to begin to help us to breathe better instead of feeling strangled so you can only do three jobs instead of six i'll be happy with the three me too yeah so what do I do? Now you are a creative director, aren't you? Isn't that what you, you said your title is? Yeah, that's my title, besides founder and inventor. Yes, I do that too. But the founder and inventor isn't your day-to-day, -day, I mean, isn't I'm taking I'm always your... inventing. <laughs> always. Yeah, in the shower. Yeah, yeah. She's wanting to get the best, <laughs> okay, the best I know, ideas. I, I know, this gives them good ideas. shower when I'm asleep. Level C managers and senior technical professionals and individual computer contributors. You said level C managers and... Level C, colon, managers and senior technical professionals and individual contributors. Okay. That's what we need. And we're going to get it. I think where I messed up is C level versus level C. They mean two different things. They do. Mm-hmm. So you can talk about your C level, and I'll talk about my level C. Why would I talk about C level? I'm not looking for a C no, level. No, we're not. We're not looking for C <laughs> so level. So why would I even talk about we're it? We're looking for level C employees. <laughs> Two level C employees. Yeah. So you was trying. No, I'm just admitting I, my, my mistake. Okay. Which you never do. But anyway, so <laughs> next... Isaac, that we this, need see, see, Isaac, on the Isaac 500, knows, and now she want to talk over me, but Isaac knows that it's just like. <laughs> so we got the new employees. <laughs> We've got <clears throat> two new puff cuffs that are supposed to come out. So we need tooling. Oh we God. need, we need, we need tooling for at least, we need additional tooling. Well, yeah. And so. Yeah, and tooling, y'all. But we, but hold up, hold up, hold up. But, the, but the good thing is, is that we have um, a second manufacturer that, that's coming on that. Um, I'm I'm fairly confident about their tooling ability, and to get things right at a, at a reasonable same. pricing and and produce it properly. But reasonable, I believe they're reasonable. But even reasonable ain't cheap. Oh no no Psh, no! Don't don't give me don't get it twisted. Right, it tooling ain't cheap. is always between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, but for but, tooling. Well, but so but think about it though, right? So when we first started, the first tooling that we got was single cavity. Right now we, was, know, now, now we know. Now we know better. And now, we do, now the one we've, we're getting more experience, we know better. We we got, we got two cavity, for the same price. Got you. Which is remarkable. Excuse me. So. Five so minutes. so we got a lot of stuff that we. No, but that's not it. That's not it. Really? Yeah, that's not it. What am I missing? We're bringing. We're expanding our fulfillment services. I said that. Did he say that, Isaac? See, look at you. See, too busy hating, but came here. Oh, look at that hate blocked them ears, y'all. Hateration. Um, mm. So we said fulfillment, the two employees, the bigger space, additional tooling, expanding and op absorbing part of our supply chain. I said that. I think that's it. Besides, <laughs> I need a bigger <laughs> level, C level suite. <laughs> office uh, for Lord. myself and i need why, a personal you, i need a personal assistant no she doesn't listen y'all she has this dining room table as a desk and i love it <laughs> she don't need no bigger are you kidding me i need space for the dog oh, Lord. and i need a couch <laughs> in case i don't want to come home 
No, you need to count for your naps. That's what that needs. That too. <laughs> Midday naps up in there snoring. All right, close the door. Shante, tell them I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, but seriously, see y'all, see how, see what happened. But, and, but this is, but in, in all, <laughs> in all honesty, and um, it, entrepreneurship does allow. I don't know. We we joke more now though than we used to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we have to. Because we're together all talk on day. Oh, and get this, y'all. She so, if you haven't met Sita yet. I want to let you know, uh -oh. don't get offended. So if you say something and she doesn't understand or it kind of hits the back corner of her brain and it hasn't triggered yet and her face contorts and her eyebrows go up and she's looking at you like you just like have five heads, don't take offense. We, I have an over animated <laughs> face. I know that. And I don't see myself, so I can't. I can't like, <laughs> I can't work on it. And it took but me 25 years to, it, it took, it took, and, and online, it took 25 years and a marriage session online for that to come out. Cause what, I never I, knew it. I never knew that. I, I Cause every you. time you come, you're like, why are you looking like that? And I'm like, looking like what? Right. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> Oh Lord. <laughs> So. I'm glad we got that out in the open after right. 25, 25 years. years like, man, she's been looking crazy, at, looking at me crazy for 25 years, and I didn't know why. I have just, an over-animated face. I know that. Over-animated face. Now you know, I, now people I are like, know. what's wrong? What do you mean what's wrong? I don't know. Nothing is wrong. It's just, and then I tell people, look, <laughs> I'm, I have, you know, my face is over-exaggerated, whatever face I'm making, so and now don't got, read it the wrong way. And now she got contacts. <laughs> oh, now I can't see in one eye. It's ridiculous. Now everybody's like, what? what's, what's going on with her eyes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. It's like, is she winking at me? What is, what is she doing? Her husband is right there. What is happening? <laughs> So that is it <laughs> from us. Um, so uh, go fit, go check out our page on republic.co, not .com, republic.co. Oh, yes. Go, and yes. when you put in republic, do not end up at the Republican convention or re Republican party page. It's republic.co. Or you can look up Puff Cuff, all one word, yep. on Republic. And we... And, we need, we your, need support. your support and spread the word for four payments <laughs> <laughs> of 99.99. Right. <laughs> so this is Cedar and Garrett signing off for From Idea to Invention, a podcast for inventors and small businesses. Yep, yep. And as always, we say, take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. <laughs>